Hello everyone, um, I'm just going to run through a, a demo of the Disability Advocacy New South Wales um, self source environment. It's a sandbox, you can see it in your screen at the moment, and this is absolutely with permission from DA New South Wales. We're using a sandbox, so no client data is in here, um, and that also means unfortunately there are one or two things that, that don't work or that I won't do because I don't want to mess with their solution. Um, but what I'm going to show you is how DA New South Wales uses Salesforce uh, from an advocate's perspective, right? So the people that are actually supporting the clients that they work with. And as you heard Amanda say in the interview, um, they, they, this technology is intertwined into, into the day-to-day -day work of the client advocates. It's not an afterthought. It's not something that they do at the end of the day. This is absolutely the solution that dovetails into their work. So what we're looking at at the moment is the home screen for Salesforce. This can be set up to show things that are specific to each individual user, right? They're made up of various components um, that they can be shifted around and, and so on. Uh, and it, it is, it's my dashboard, it's my to-do list for the day. It shows me things that I need to action, um, tasks, um, case reviews and, and so on. So it's a real summary a real guide and where I would probably go at the start of every day. Now, if I, uh, maybe I'll start by explaining just how DA New South Wales runs things. So they get referrals either as a self-referral or from a professional family member. Um, and those forms, I'll give you an example of one here, um, can be made, can be used internally, but also made publicly available. And if you fill them in, um, and hit submit, which again, I'm not going to do because I don't want to create a, a record in the production environment. Um, it will create a case in Salesforce just automatically. And you can add whatever fields you want here. You can change what's here, obviously. Um, and it can be dynamic. So do I need to include any additional people? Sure, that box pops, pops up. Um, and of course, uh, any of these fields can be changed. So I would hit submit and that would come into Salesforce and create a case. And everything for DA New South Wales is built around the case. The case is key. Um, this, as I said, all dummy data. I'm gonna go take a look at one that I was looking at earlier. When it's first created, it comes in with a status of inquiry, right? And there's these helpful guide points over here. So it tells me what to do. So if I've got a poor memory, or um, if I'd rather focus on delivering great quality service to people rather than trying to remember what's next, or even if I'm new uh, and you know I need reminding every now and then, this, these guideline steps really tell me how to, how to do things. So I've checked the status, uh, I've um, checked the region, the case is mine, uh, sales fix support, that's who I am, and I'm gonna move the case to intake. And what this will do is, is pop up, um, something that I need to complete. Uh, this is essentially asking me, how do I want to communicate with people? And because this is a sandbox, I don't want anything to go out automatically in case um, it gets sent to the wrong person. So I'm just gonna mark those as no and click done. So now we're in the intake stage of the case, right? And there'll be some stuff that I need to work through to check um, eligibility, prioritization, etc. I've done this already. I've come in and I've had a look I can see, again, fields that are specific to DA New South Wales can be changed to whoever's using the solution. But I've checked, is there a conflict of interest? No. Um, is, is there a disability? Yes, good. All right, so the client is eligible. And if they weren't, I could record a reason. Now I want to look at prioritization. How urgent is this case? Well, here I've selected that it's urgent because they're vulnerable and at risk. Um, it's about uh, uh, neglect or abuse, and so I've deemed it to be urgent. And before I move on to the next stage, I can have a look at, at a quality piece here. So, okay, green, 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 tick, 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 but there's something missing. Um, country of birth. Now, country of birth here is actually entered, and it could be that because we're in a sandbox, there's a bit of data missing. Um, I'm not sure, but I can come in here uh, and try saving the record again. And if if that rec um, that cross doesn't disappear when I refresh the screen, that's just a sandbox issue, right? We can see the data is there. Now, I might need to put them into the waitlist. As you've heard from Amanda, that's um, the waitlist management has significantly improved uh, as a result of using Salesforce. But really what I wanna do is actually start 
doing some work with them. And this is where the advocacy agreement comes in. So I can create a new agreement whilst talking to the client, right? And you might say you don't want to be on a screen while you're talking to somebody, that's fine. Um, we're going to do a digital signature. We are going to deal with the NDIS refusal to fund uh, Roger the Vice to support hearing defici oh, heck, deficiencies in uh, daily life. So watch is one of those um, things that you put in your ear and you give the, the, the microphone to, to somebody and you can hear them directly. Um, there's, a, there's a status for the agreement, draft, et cetera. Um, there's an approval status, so I can create this and then submit it for approval to somebody like Amanda to, to approve. Uh, at this stage, I'm just, just going to save it. And now that we've got this agreement, we can go in and create some actions, right? And this is, again, it's an agreement between you and your client. Who's going to do what? But let's take some ownership and responsibility. Um, so here's some agreed actions. I can add one. So who's the action going to be by, the advocate or the client? It's obviously related to the case that I was looking at. What, when's it due by? So by the 24th, um, uh, advocate, um, advocate to review NDIS documentation, right? Whatever the, the thing is, we know when it's um, to be due by, we can click create. And of course, we can add as many as we like. Um, do you want to create another one? Yes, no. Let's say no for the moment. And these actions get added. You'll also remember on the home page, I had a bunch of actions. So it'll appear in my list of things to do because it's for me. Um, and I can generate to submit for approval and then generate an actual document that gets emailed to the client for signature using DocuSign, which is, uh, you know, <laughs> a great way of, of doing things. Now, if I go back to that case, having created the, um, the advocacy agreement, and it moves through a series of approvals, I can also track things like consent and relationships. So if I come in here, I can check whether someone has given consent, as that they given future, they are happy to receive surveys, et cetera. I can, any sort of consent that you're wanting to track can be logged here. I can also add in relationships. So maybe um, you know who the carer is or who the family members are, you can add those things in here too case notes so every time you speak to the um the client you're going to want to add a, a case note you can do a quick case note down here um, that allows you to just quickly take some notes without necessarily going into the whole process um or i can just create a new one here if i've got quite a bit to say so what's the uh, reviewed ndis documentation and spoke to client um it's a uh, advocacy support because we're in the advocacy process. It was over the telephone. It was related to the action that we created to created, and it took. Oh, I don't know how NDIS documentation is quite long, isn't it? Forty five minutes, and then I can add in some comments. Uh, documentation doesn't support restriction of use of you know whatever you want to say, right? And I can create as many case notes as I like, right? As I'm in this advocacy um, process, I'm going to create lots of case notes. I'm going to speak to the client. I'm going to email them. I'm going to maybe even send text messages and so on. And I want to record all of that, including the time it's taken. So we can see up here, the time spent is incrementally increasing. So uh, actually, let me come in here and show you something that um, I did quickly bypass, and that was the score survey. So this is a particular um, survey that is done for, for clients that are funded by a particular program of work. And we can do a score survey here and here, here in, right? So we're looking at circumstances, um, middle ground. Uh, you know, these are all fields that can be created and edited for, for your particular 
reporting requirements, whether that's score or DEX or, or whatever. Um, I'm not going to bother saving that. Oh, yeah, no, why don't I save that? It might throw an error. It might tell me I haven't filled in all the fields, but that's okay. All righty, let's go back to that case. So I've um, agreed with the client what we're going to do. I'm starting to take some case notes. I've logged consent. We're starting to deliver some outcomes here for this person, and we want to track um, uh, the outcome and where we're where we're at. So we can say NDIS review uh, occurred and funding allocated. I can't spell. That's okay. Um, they've been sent a score survey. And again, we see that process. I can click on the next button and so on. And you can set goals and client satisfaction and all those sorts of things. But in the time that we have, maybe I'll, I'll move on. Um, I can't really show you how to send MS, SMSs from a demo instance. Um, but maybe let's take a look at the case review. So cases can be automatically or manually reviewed by a manager, right? So it might be that if um, the case meets particular criteria, um, it automatically gets added to the case review process. And that's where, if you remember on the home page, um, case reviews here, these are sessions where the manager and the client advocate come together to discuss how they manage that particular case in a supervisory kind of way, right? Is the data being collected correctly? Was the correct advice being given? Were the right actions being taken? All that sort of thing all ensures that the quality of the work that's being done is is next level and, and i think this is one area where da new south wales were wells were really able to see an improvement in um the outcomes that they were achieving and the time it was taking them um in the before times before salesforce they were having to go through almost every case to check data was being entered correctly well with validations and quality control that's no longer necessary they're now cherry picking the best cases to review from a, uh, an audit perspective, but also a, a quality and training perspective. And of course, as you work through this, and uh, we go back to the case, I should have marked that they've been allocated um, and you know, it tells you what to do, set up an advocacy agreement, which we've done, add case notes to your tab, and then you can mark it as closed. And again, make sure you ensure you're, you're recording the reason for closure, right? So here, oh, Oh, it's not letting me do that. I must have chosen. Oh, let's say there was a conflict of interest and we couldn't close it. I probably haven't ticked the right box somewhere. Um, so that's start to finish how a case is managed. Um, very easy to do. And then, of course, the final piece is the reporting. And if we take a look at um, the advocate, actually, no, do you know what? I'm going to go see if the DA um, performance oh, was a quality dashboard. I bet that's interesting. Now, I will say this is, dashboard, uh, this is a sandbox without much data in it, so there may not be too much data in here. But this again, oh, fantastic, right? So there's some data here. This is another data quality control um, process, right? We can see that there are three cases where the language has not been recorded at all. We can see that there are two where the birth date is missing. Um, we're indigenous and so on. So this is, again, another way of ensuring that advocates are collecting the right data at the right time. So a bit of a whistle-stop tour there, um, but hopefully you found that helpful. Um, do contact us and ask us for ask us questions because we think this solution is really awesome and are clearly helping DA New South Wales deliver some great outcomes for their clients. Thanks very much.